Hello everybody, welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. Before we begin, I just want to say I hope you guys are all doing well, still nice and happy. So this entire video is dedicated to one topic and it sounds very simple. It's moments in three dimensions. Remember, the last video we talked about moments in two dimensions and we basically said, oh, it's a piece of cake. We just take our force, multiply it by a perpendicular distance, we're good to go. Well, as you guys are going to see, Moments in 3D, well, kind of blows chunks. And the reason why is because in 3D, it's very difficult to get that perpendicular distance. So what we're going to actually have to do is use position vectors if we want to go to that route. So let's say I have a nice three-dimensional space and I have my force vector F. Now, again, moments are specific about points. Depending on where you take the moment, it's going to be different. So let's say in this particular case, I want to take the moment about point O. Now again, to get this moment, I basically have to find the perpendicular distance between my force vector and that point. So I'm going to look for this distance right here. And the question really becomes, how do we find that distance? Well, again, as I kind of hinted to, we can actually use position vectors if we want. So we're going to break this down into a series of steps. The first one, of course, is we need to define a point along the line of action of the force vector, right? So that's going to be the first step. So let me go to the end of the vector, and I'm going to define a point right there. From there, I can actually create a position vector from the point I want to take the moment about to the point on my force vector. So it would look something like this. So it goes from the point where I want to take the moment about over to my force vector. From there, we talked about the thing called dot product. And dot product allows us to solve for angles between two vectors. So if I wanted to, if I have my force vector and my position vector, I can figure out that angle theta between them. Now note on the other side that perpendicular distance d, it's perpendicular to f. So we actually just formed a right triangle. So the first thing to do would be to solve for that angle. And we have a nice formula with the dot product where cosine of theta is equal to my force vector dotted with my position vector and then divided by both magnitudes. And again, since we created a nice right triangle, we can actually use uh, just simple trigonometry to solve for that perpendicular distance, where the perpendicular distance is going to be the magnitude of that position vector multiplied by sine theta. Now you guys may be saying, ah, <laughs> that sucked. And I agree, that sucks. So no one wants to do it this way. It's a lot of work, it's inconvenient, but more importantly, think of the result. At the end, we have a force times a distance, so we're going to just get a number, let's say 100. That 100 doesn't tell us anything. In two dimensions, it was nice because all of our components, if we're in the xy plane, all of our moments are about the z-axis, every single one of them, no matter what we're doing if we're in two dimensions. In three dimensions, we get a number if we do it this way, but we don't know if it's about the x-axis, the y-axis, the z-axis, or anything about it. So what we actually have to do is find a better way to determine moments where we can figure out moment components so that when I get my moment, I know the moment about the x-axis, I know the moment about the y-axis, and I know the moment about the z-axis. So if I want a moment about a point in 3D, I can actually determine it using cross product where the moment is going to be equal to my position vector crossed with my force vector. All right position vector cross with force vector. And remember that order. Remember, we discussed that the cross product is order dependent. If I were to take my force vector and cross it with my position vector, I'm going to get all the components correctly, but all the signs are going to be swapped. So it's important to know that the position vector goes first and then the force vector. So if I were to have a force in 3D and I want to figure out what moment this force creates about point O, all I need to do is create a position vector from the point at which I'm interested in, so point O, to any point on the force vector. So there's the first real trick. It can be any point on this force vector or the force vector line of action. So just for fun, let's say I'm going to the S of the force vector. I have a position vector now, which goes from point O to my force vector. I have my force vector, so I have my two vectors. All I need to do to find the moment is just cross them together. So the result moment is also going to be a vector which we discussed. And you guys are going to say, Clayton, hold on a second. Why is this moment a vector? So let's see. I cross them together. I get my moment vector. And usually for these moment vectors, we draw a little 
kind of swirl around them to show that they're not a force vector, they're actually a moment vector. And what's going to happen is it's going to have two components. So I'm kind of getting ahead of myself again. Again, order is important. R cross F is not equal to F cross R. Make sure the position vector always goes first. But again, I want to go to the point, what exactly does this moment vector mean? Well, the best way to show you guys is an example. So let's say at this point, I have my position vector. You guys are experts on finding those. And I have my force vector. Again, you guys are experts at finding those. And I want to find the moment about point O. I can use my fish method. I can use some other method. I, whatever method you guys feel comfortable with. And you guys can find the moment as a vector. Now, this goes back to what I'm saying is, why is this moment a vector? What are these three components? Well, each one of these components is the moment about that specific axis. So this 25i, this means that the moment around the x-axis is 25. For the y-axis, it's going to be the 90j. And for the z-axis, of course, it's going to be that negative 80. All right, so here's the key here. The moment's going to have three components. Each one of the components is the moment about a specific axis. Notice in that very first method I showed you guys at the very beginning of this video, we didn't really have moment components. We were just given a random number. So it actually gave us no information. The cross product here gives us all the information we need. Now, notice that for that k component, it turned out to be negative. So that's one very sexy thing for us is that the cross product also takes into account the directions. We don't actually have to try and manually include any directions. The cross product takes care of that for us. So again, I just want to say it one last time so you guys know, moments in 3D, cross product. Moments in 3D, cross product. If you guys know that, you guys will be absolutely fine in your midterm or final question. Again, the only trick, make sure the position vector is before the force vector when we cross them. Order is very important. So now you guys are saying, all right, feeling good. You guys are saying, you know what, Clayton, this is easy. Cross product, piece of cake, got a formula sheet, I'm happy. What could they do that would screw me over? Well, that's going to be this. Moments about an axis. Now you guys are saying, Clayton, we have the components X, Y, Z. I'm good to go. And I'm not talking about the X, Y, Z axis. I'm talking about any random axis. Typically what they love to do in an exam is give you a drawing with a door hinge. And the door hinge will be in some random direction. And they'll say, give me the moment about that axis. So we got to figure out how exactly do we do that. So let's say that we have our nice 3D vector space. We have our force. And I say, you know what? I want the moment this force creates about 0.0. And you guys are saying, eh, Clayton, you're joking, right? This is a piece of cake. All I need to do is create a position vector from that point to anywhere on my force. I cross them together and I get my moment vector. So it's going to have MX, I, MY, J, and MZ times K. And again, we talked about how MX, that's going to be the component in the x-axis. MY is the component along the y-axis. And MZ is going to be the moment around the z-axis. So you guys are you guys are feeling great. You guys are saying this is easy. And then they hit you with this. All right, you know those three moment components. What about the moment component about this axis? And this is where students start to go, uh-oh because they forget. But this is actually going to be the same type of problem that we faced before in force vectors with projections. Remember, we talked about projections and say that they can ask for the force component in any random direction. Well, we are actually going to use the exact same procedure here, same as projections. So recall that from before, we can use dot product to find the components of a vector in an arbitrary direction. So if I want the moment about a particular axis, it sounds really scary, but all I have to do is take my moment vector and dot it with the unit vector that is defining that axis. There's only one trick that you guys need to know. If we have the moment vector about point O, we have to make sure that point O is on the axis we want. Let's say that they give us the axis to the side and our point O is over here. Well, we actually can't project it anymore. We have to make sure that the moment we took, or the point we took the moment about is on the axis that we're interested in. So another thing to keep in mind is we're using dot product now. All right, remember dot product gives us a scalar. We take two vectors, we get a scalar. And this makes sense because the moment about a specific axis should just be one number. Think about the force vector. We have three components, 
But if I were to say what is the force along the x-axis, well, we know it's just going to be a single number. The same thing applies here. So we dot them together, we get our nice scalar, which is going to be the moment about that particular axis. Now again, I really want to emphasize this. In order for this to work, point O, which we know the moment for, it has to be on that axis. You guys may be wondering, the reason why is we don't create a triangle. You guys can look at the projection video to see what exactly I, I mean by that. So now, if you guys are feeling particularly ballsy, and you guys don't want to do these steps. So if I were to look at this question, there's two steps. Find the moments about point O, take the projection. But some of you guys may be feeling really great, and you guys are saying, you know what, I'm going to do it all one step, no problem at all. Well, you guys can do that using something called the triple scalar product. And it's going to be the exact same calculations that we did before using the fish method, but instead of i, j, k at the top, we substitute them with the three components of our unit vector that is defined by that axis. So again, same thing as before, just switch out i, j, k with that particular thing, you'll be good to go. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.